This video is a discussion of the main applications of the MedSmart software in the grinding and flotation industry. There are two options when purchasing MedSmart. The first option is to buy MedSmart as a standalone product and you can construct any new project using this software. The second option is that Minerality can pre-program your grinding and or flotation plant into MedSmart and the MedSmart software is delivered to you ready for use. There are three main applications of the MedSmart software um, on your grinding and flotation plant. Firstly, you can use MedSmart to mass balance data collected from your plant and this can be used on a daily basis. Secondly, you can use MedSmart to build a mathematical model of your plant. This is a very important process if you want to make informed decisions about variable changes on your plant in the future. And thirdly, you can use MedSmart to perform simulation studies and the purpose of the simulation studies is to diagnose potential problems and receive advice on how to solve them. In the top ribbon of the MedSmart software, there are three distinct regions. The first gray section is where you draw the flow sheet and where you enter the setup um, parameters of the software. So for example, the structural dimensions of each equipment piece. Um, secondly, we have the blue section, which is where we can enter survey data, perform a mass balance study and build a mathematical model of the plant. In the orange section, we can set conditions and perform simulation studies. We then have the summary, graphs and tables and a report of the mass balance, the mathematical model or the simulation study. Apart from the metallurgical accounting benefits, the mass balancing can also diagnose potential bottlenecks in, on your plant, which not, might not be apparent immediately from direct measurements. So for example, you can predict too high or low flow rates, densities or product size distributions. Importantly, you can also calculate recirculating loads in any recirculating circuit without physically measuring it on the plant. With flotation, you can predict if there is a mineral metal buildup in the recirculating stream in the flotation circuit, which might be taking up valuable residence time. When we enter the survey data, we can enter our slurry information from the survey in this screen. You can simply copy and paste the information from Excel directly to this screen. Here you can choose whether you want to um, mass balance the rates, the water, the size distributions, the head assays or size by assay analysis. So for example, in this case, I have already copied and pasted the information into the screen, stream and this information was collected during a survey campaign on this plant. Here you will see in the case of the SAGMOL that there was no information available for this um, equipment piece. After entering this information, I can perform a mass balance and then look at the results. If I click on the SAGMOL, you can see that the blue dots represent the, um, the survey, so there were no information available, and the orange line represents the mass balanced result. We are now able to do analysis around the SAGMOL because we have this information. Furthermore, if we look at the cyclones, Here we will see that 
we have a mass balanced result which fits quite well through the experimental points and we also know the recirculating load. Um, this number was calculated without any direct measurement on the underflow stream. This is a very important performance indicator when we have Bormol cyclone circuits. So for every equipment piece um, we have the drive throughput, the density, the flow rates and the size distribution of the product streams. The second application is to build a mathematical model of your plant. Now this type of study is not done frequently but it is very important to perform. Every plant must have a mathematical model and the reason for that is that the engineer on the plant must be able to do a simulation in order to see the effect of the decisions that he makes on a daily basis on the plant. After we've entered our survey data and we've performed a mass balance, we can calibrate the plant. We calibrate the plant simply by cl clicking on the Calibrate Models button. Within a few seconds, a calibration result is available. When you click on the SACMOL, you will see that for the size distribution, we have our survey data, our mass balance information, and then the calibrated result. So we have achieved quite a good model fit on the SAGMO in this specific study. The calibration constant result is given below and this includes things like the breakage rate, the power draw calibration constant, the slurry filling calibration constant and importantly we also measure the ore hardness inside the SAGMO so that you don't need to perform tests regularly on the feed sample. We work on a scale of 0 to 100, with 0 being the softest. In this case, the ore hardness showed that the ore was of medium hard hardness. I will check one more equipment piece, the cyclone, and here you will see that we had quite a good fit through the um, mass balance points and here we will see the calibration constant results. Here when we look at the efficiency curve you will see that our water split was quite reasonable and we have calculated our cut size as well. Every time there is a calibration constant result, it is accompanied with a full explanation of what those parameters mean. So while the user uses the software, they get a good understanding about the behavior of the equipment piece from a mathematical. In performing simulation studies um, on your grinding and flotation circuit, you always have to check specific scenarios. These scenarios may be scenarios that you are experiencing at the moment or scenarios that you will be expecting in the future. So for example, if you know that your ore body will become harder or softer in the near future, you will be able to simulate that. You can also simulate what will happen on your plant if you receive a much coarser or finer feed on the feed belt for that day. On this screen there are a few examples of scenarios that you can test and these scenarios are changes that you can make to your equipment pieces. So if you consider for example changing the number of cyclones operating or using different vortex finders or spigot sizes you can make an informed decision about the effect of this change on the operation of the plant. Now after you do a simulation and this simulation is on a current or future scenario, there are various outputs that you have to study. 
These outputs include things like, for example, slurry pooling in your SAG mall or the total mill load in your SAG mall. It might include things like the pressure of your cyclones, the recirculating loads around your cyclones, the final product size of your plant. Um, when you do a simulation, these outputs are important to, to note. Um, using MedSmart, the software automatically calculates all these outputs for you, but it also decides whether the output is efficient and whether it is within reasonable limits. If it is outside of the limit, the software will give you advice on how to solve that specific problem. And this advice is advice that expert consultants would have given you in an optimization study. So for example, if the SAGMO is experiencing slurry pooling, this is bad for the throughput for your SAGMO. And the software will give you advice on how to solve that slurry pooling problem. When we do a simulation study, we have two options when it comes to the calibration constants. If we've already performed a mass balance and a calibration study, um, we will automatically have calibration constants in each equipment piece. If you do not have this information, for example, for a greenfield study, you can simply fill these calibration numbers with default constants. These default constants are the average parameters of those equipment pieces in the industry. The purpose of a simulation study is to set specific conditions for a simulation, then to perform the simulation and to check the results. When we do a simulation study, the first thing we have to look at is the feed. Here we can change the throughput of the plant, we can change the size of the feed coming into equipment piece or the distribution. You can also change the hardness of the ore. So I can make the ore much harder to see the effect of a harder ore. You can also change, for example, the discharge grades or the operational variables. So I can see what will happen if I run with a higher ball load and a higher ball size. I can do this for every equipment piece. For example, for the cyclones, I can change the number of cyclones operating or I can change the vortex finder or the spigot. After performing the simulation, which will take a few seconds, some equipment pieces will be blue and some equipment pieces will be red. If it is blue, it indicates good behavior. If it's red, it indicates that there is a specific problem. If I click on the SAGMOL, for example, I will see that I have a problem with my power draw as well as the slurry filling. Now, when there is a specific problem, it needs to be highlighted, but it is also accompanied with expert advice on how to solve that specific problem. So in this case, the software tells me that my mill power is too high and that I will have slurry pooling at these conditions. These are all indicators that this operation will either not be possible or this operation will not be efficient. We can check the cyclones and see here that none of our outputs have gone red. So the pressure and the recirculating load is okay, but we have a message that we will experience some roping conditions on the underflow of the cyclone. For the Bormel year, you can see that the power draw is too high, so this is not possible operation for the Bormel.
After the simulation is done, we can see a full summary of the performance of the plant, what was the throughput, the total power draw, the energy efficiency, how much water was used, and um, how much water was added to each equipment piece. If flotation was included in this example, we would have been able to calculate the recovery to the concentrate. The stream results can be viewed in table format, but also in graphical format for each of the slurry streams. This information can be exported to Excel or to a PDF 